Alright guys, you already know what time it is. It is MCAT discreet quick 1000 accelerator magic round time. So what we do here is these are um, CP discreet questions. Okay, you guys are going to do these. You're going to do 11 to 14. Pick your answer, write it down. Hopefully you get them all right. You know, if you get them wrong, I'll show you why you went wrong. And hopefully you can learn a thing or two. So that'd be dope. All right. So 11 to 14, this is question 11, pick your answer, write it down. 12, pick your answer, write it down. 13, pick your answer, write it down. And 14, pick your answer, write it down. Pause it whenever you need to. Hopefully, you guys get them all right. When you're done, resume this video. All right, question 11. Which of the following accurately describes the difference between alpha D glucose and beta D glucose. Alpha D glucose and beta D glucose are enantiomers and thus rotate polarized light in opposite directions. This is wrong. This is wrong. Strike through. Wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, because they are anomers. Okay. They differ at the anomeric carbon only. That's the only place they differ in. Okay. The hemiacetal carbons of alpha D glucose and beta D glucose have opposite absolute configurations. This is correct. Okay. The Hemiacetal carbon is also known as the anomeric carbon. Okay, it's the same really thing here. And those are the ones that differ. Okay, one is uh, one is like one up, one down. Oh my God, I forgot what it's called. One is actual, one is cis. Fuck, I forgot. All right, B, the hemiacetal carbons of alpha D-glucose and beta D-glucose have opposite absolute configurations. This is correct. This is correct. Okay, the hemiacetal carbon is also the anomeric carbon. Okay, one will go up and will point up and be cis and the other will point down and up and be trans. Okay, you should know the difference between those. C, one is a reducing sugar and the other is not. No, these are monosaccharides. Okay, glucose is a monosaccharide. They're all reducing sugars. Okay. Alpha D glucose takes a pyranose ring conformation while beta D glucose takes a fear. No, no, that is not the difference between them. Okay, they both usually take the pyranose ring form. Okay, so the answer here is B. 0.44 moles of AgNO3 and 0.20 moles of MgCl2 are mixed together. What is the mass percent composition of AG in the product? Ooh, in the product. Product, guys. Product. Okay, so we have AgNO3 and MgCl2. So we're going to use the whiteboard here to write this out. AgNO3, AgNO3 plus MgCl2, right? All right, when these are mixed together, what are they going to form? They are going to form AgCl and MgNO3 and magnesium is 2 plus. So therefore, we're going to have NO3 in parentheses and we're going to have a 2 here. Okay. Cl2. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So only we only care about this guy. That's it. AgCl. Okay. And so the... Molar mass of Ag over the molar mass of Ag plus the molar mass of Cl. So what's the molar mass of Ag? Silver, I keep saying Ag. So silver, I'm pretty sure it's silver, right? Okay, so 107.9. 107.9 divided by 107.9 plus, I believe chlorine is 35. Let me double check. Chlorine is 35.5, cool. 35.5 you divide these and I'm going to cheat and use a calculator because I want to save you guys time and I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do this type of math okay so the answer is 7.9 divided by 107.9 plus 35.5.75 this one C is the answer let's keep going when blood is donated it is important that no active antibodies are transferred along with the red blood cells. In order to accomplish this, a reducing agent, which breaks the disulfide bonds that maintain the coordinate structure of antibodies, is added to donated blood. This is effective because what? Reducing agent is going to give the cysteine an electron, and that's going to separate it. It's that simple. 
Okay, reducing breaks disulfide bonds. All right, and oxidizing cysteines make disulfide bonds. So A, no. When cysteine accepts electrons, it separates into two cysteine groups that are located on separate polypeptides. I don't even got to look at the other answer choices. I know B is correct. Let's keep going. When an acyl halide reacts with a primary alcohol, which of the following will form? You should have this memorized, in my opinion. Okay, this is an ester, but I'll, I'll do the mechanism in case you didn't have that memorized, okay? So, this is what we got here. Boom, acyl halide. Let's say it's a chlorine here. Okay, that's a halogen. Primary alcohol. Okay, let's say we have this alcohol. Oxygen. It's going to attack here. So you're going to come up. You're going to get uh, tetrahedral intermediate. You're going to get oxygen here, negative. You're going to get um, chlorine, let's say, here. You're going to get the O. You're going to get hydrogen here. And you're going to get that tail here. And these are going to come down, kick off the chlorine. And you're going to get the carbonyl reforms, so you're going to get this, and you're going to get an ester, okay? And you have a hydrogen here, and this is eventually deprotonated by either, I don't know, something, water, or basic conditions, whatever you do, okay? This is going to be deprotonated, and you're going to get an ester. Answer is A. And that's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. Hopefully, you guys got everything right. I'll see you guys for the next round of MCAT Fast Discrete 3100 Magic.